First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works. Please, please. What we're going to discuss tonight is the origin, the true meaning and origin of the um, holy day, Thanksgiving. Um, the information which that we've been presented with is only from one perspective, which is basically from um, the defeat of the Native Americans by the establishment of racism and colonialism by Christopher Columbus, which becomes what is known as the African Holocaust over 500 years. However, um, Thanksgiving itself actually was a remembrance day. All right? Um, let's get into that information. Um, for those who don't know, there was two governments in North America. One was the Moorish federal government, and the other was the European state de facto government. All right? In other words, it's the United States of America. So the United States is an extraction or from America. America is not of and from the United States. The United States is a corporation. So the United States was given the ability in order to do commerce, intercourse, trade, import and export, all right, on the Moors' homeland. But the Moors were supposed to still have the superior claim of lien. And I'll demonstrate what we're talking about. Um, the fact that, you know, you can observe on the back of the um, of a dollar bill, um, you know, what's called the Federal Reserve Note or the IOU fiat note, there's two national seals on the back of the $1 bill, right, or fiat note, a pyramid on one side and the eagle on the other, all right? Now, the pyramid represents the Moorish federal government, and the eagle represents the European colony. All right? In other words, it's what we gave them, all right? Um, of course, we know that the eagle or the phoenix actually is the symbol of Heru, all right? There are 13 states based on the 13 um, Lenape tribes called the Fire Clans, all right? The European colonies was adopted into um, the first of the 13 tribes, which was called the Eagle Tribe. So that's how the... Um, Civil became um, that of the eagle. Um, 
All right? So I'm letting that sink in. So they were adopted into the Eagle tribe, and that's how they became, That's how they got the symbol of the Eagle. Now, these 13 tribes was patterned after the 13 clan mothers of the um, Mitchell, um government, right, of the Iroquois Confederation, all right? The Iroquois finally succeeded, all right, I mean, overthrowing our government by tricking us into um, accepting a role in the position of the woman. In other words, um, transforming it from a somewhat matriarchal society to a patriarchal society. Now, later, four of the six nations of the Iroquois themselves was conquered by an insidious plan put into action by the colonials and the Britons and the British. Prior to the Revolutionary War, um, the Moors stood in the center holding the great chain of friendship with the Europeans at one end and the Indian nations at the other. Now, they controlled the um, Delaware River, originally called the, um, the Napi Wahitonk, or the Wahitonk, um, or what is known now as the Lenape River, right? Now, the more side of the government trusted in the natural law, hence the reason why natural law is still the supreme law of the land and the highest law in the land, as well as also nature's God, all right, in which that they refer to um, God as Kakich, Maniko, or Anu, or Anu, all right, um, for their guidance. Um, the two nations can be seen in the preamble of the Constitution of the United States, all right? Now, when we're talking about those seals, all right, now you know on the seal it has Anuit, Ecleptic, Novus Ordo Seclerum. Now, they say that and knew it. Ecleptic means in God we trust, or the one God. However, the word um, in Latin would be Dios. Okay? Or Dios. It will be and knew it. So, and knew it is actually is an extension of the word and knew, in which that symbolizes the oneness. Now, when you go to the Constitution, you know, and start with we the people, the we the people actually are the Lenape, all right, who are the um, the Northern Washington or Choctaw tribes, all right. Um, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. All right, so as you can you know, so as you can hear, the preamble of the Constitution of the United States of America speaks of two governments, the United States and the United States of America, all right, to form a more perfect union. All right, so first of all, you cannot make something uh, more perfect. It either is perfect or it is not. So that tells you that this new union was to be a legal fiction, a de facto unlawful government. In other words, that was simply based on trade, commerce, all right, intercourse. Now, the new government did not apply to the Moors, however. All right, we were not and shall not ever be Union State citizens or United States citizens. Our government was and is separate from the Albion European government, all right? Now, however, the Moorish federal seal or side of the government has been infiltrated and now has become the legal fiction, all right? Now, the preamble of the, United, of the Constitution of the United States of America shows that the origin of this other government came from a pre-existing nation, as we said earlier, United States of America. Notice that the Moorish federal side of the government has the word um, and new eclipse, all right, which basically means God has favored us or the one God. But like we said, um, it actually would be and new has favored us. So some more say that John Hansen, who was a Moor, all right, was at the Independence Hall during the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Some say that he was not. However, the picture on the back of the United States $2 Federal Reserve notes or the fiat notes, IOU, 
shows two presence or shows the presence of two Moorish men. All right, or black said black men. Now the question is, who are they and why aren't they listed amongst the um list of signers of the Declaration of Independence? Well, it was real simple. We gave them the Declaration of Independence. All right? Now if you um the man on the left side is actually John Hanson, if you look at the back of the two dollar bill, and the man on the right side, um, sitting thirteen Masonically to the right is Ben Bay or Ben Bay Emmanuel Muali, known as Benjamin Banneker, i.e. Prince Hall. Now, Benjamin Banneker or Ben Bay was born 1731, which would make him 45 in that picture, you know, or in that drawing or, you know, or image. Um, while John Hanson was born 1721, making him 55 in that image. Now, if you look in the, um, in Carter, um, encyclopedia, you won't see either of these men. Now, why is that? Their names are not on the Declaration of Independence because they were both Moors. And we had our own government, right? We did not need to sign a Declaration of Independence, all right? We wrote the Declaration of Independence for them. However, George Washington and his cronies never actually served their ties to the king, and, did not, and they did not win the Revolutionary War. It was a setup to trap the to trap and totally defeat the Moors from inside. Now, what you were taught in school is reconstructed history, all right? And that's the truth of the matter. Now, when you get into <clears throat> when you get into John Hanson, excuse me, and you get into what he did. You will find out that John Hanson was the one who actually established the third Sunday um, in November as the day of Thanksgiving. All right? So the Albion did not give you Thanksgiving. It might have gave you um, some of the perversion in which that now comes with it, such as Black Friday. And why do they call it Black Friday? You know, and um, because they, I guess they end the black, which is a good thing. That's when people go out and buy and get the things that they need for um, coming up, you know, a month later, Christmas. All right? Um, but nevertheless, um, you have history that John Hanson, the first up under the Articles of Confederation, all right, who was part of the Continental Congress, and who was it, a Lenape, and more, Washington, you would have him be as the establisher or founder of Thanksgiving. Now, the reason why the turkey is used is because it's a symbol of that, um, the remnants of the Moors in which that um, was part of the government in which they helped form the government or they established the United States of America or that, you know, connection were the remnants of the Ultima Empire, right, which is also, i.e., the Empire Washington did that the money, the ancient pyramid and mound builders, all right, who also studied and practiced um, a form of Islam, but not Islam in the way in which that you know, but Islam from the ancient Kemetic teachings, in which that this is what the Nation of Gods of the Earth and many others have um, explained on many occasions, is that this is what they was really talking about. And let me explain, because Happy went by the name of Muhat Ma'at, Muhat, uh, Muhat Ma'at, and Muhat Ma'at became corrupted into Muhammad and Ahmed ibn Abdullah Mustafa al Amin of the four, around fourteen hundred years ago took on the name Muhammad after he went and got teachings of the ancient mysteries from the Kushites in Ethiopia where it became Abyssinian or you know, Sudan or whatever term it was that we want to call it nowadays. All right, and this is where he got his teachings from. So it was part of still the remnants of the um, mystery schools of 
Egypt. And remember, Herodotus specifically told us, who was supposed to be the first Greek historian, told us specifically that the Egyptian um, people were a colony of the Ethiopians, which that was led into Egypt, all right, by Osar, all right? So this is what it said um, according to Herodotus. So, and you can get this from the book, What They Never Told You in History Class, as well as also you can get about John Hansen from the um, More Dirty Little Secrets by Dr. Claude Anderson. He would tell you in there that the first black was John Hansen, uh, uh, um, up under the Articles of Confederation. All right? Now, some say that he was Irish. No, well, I've never seen an Irish with an Afro. Because even if you don't use the picture of the said Liberian um, ambassador, which that they um, show of a very dark skinned man, very well dressed, um, they say that picture was not taken um, that far back in the late 1700s. All right? And that, you know, so they say that was not an actual picture, but. The drawing in which that you can actually get from the Library of Congress, which is several drawings, but you would see one particularly of a set of European or Albion, but he has an afro. So obviously, we know that, you know, uh, and they are tightly crisp um, curls or knots or kinks or kingly crowns, all right? So it is not loose. It's not a I'll be gone perm as we become used to seeing, all right? This is something in which that was natural. He actually has an afro. And there's no Irishman in which that has an afro unless he has Moorish lineage, unless he's African, all right? So let's kill all that nonsense in which that's been propagated, you know, by others because it just doesn't make any sense, all right? And you can, like I said, you can get this actual picture um, from out of several books, as well as also the Library of Congress. Now, we talked about Christopher Columbus just briefly, in which that we say that this is where this information about um, the Holocaust of the Moors tied in with the Native Americans coming at is through his establishment of racism and the Holocaust and, the, you know, colonialism, the Holocaust in which they produced in this land of the Americas specifically and the adjoining islands, you know, over 500, you know, 500, over 500 years ago. Well, Christopher Columbus was part of a secret society, all right? He was a spy for the Portuguese. All right. The name Christopher Columbus, which is Latin, you got actually Christos Foro Colombo, which is Italian. Then you have Cristobal Cologne, which is Spanish. Then you have Cristo Dova um, Colombo, which is Portuguese. Now, all try to refer to the same person who sent the sailors in 1492. However, three of these names are not correct because the navigator had the Latin name Christopher Colonus and not Christopher Columbus, all right? Columbus is Latin. Colombo is Italian. Colombo is um, Portuguese, and Colombi is French, and Palobo is Spanish, and Cologne is Catalan. Now, all of these translate to dove for pigeon, but none of these are the names of the discoverer because he used Cologne as in the Greek Cologne meaning member. The word Cologne means member. And so what was he a member of? Well, the name Cologne is derived from the Hebrew name Kohen, meaning priest. Now, you can get the um, article is called Jerusalem Times Jewish Press article entitled, Why Should the Catholic Church Honor Queen Isabella? Acknowledges that Christopher Columbus or Cologne was Jewish while rightly criticizing the fact that the Catholic Church won't admit that 
Cologne was a Jew. Now, on a fine note that Cologne, who changed his name to Columbus, was a Kohen, a priest. The name Colin is equivalent to Kohen, and the fact remains that Columbus was a Jew. All right? Now, you, um, also, we got the examination of the logs of um, of Cologne, or Christopher Columbus translated um, by Robert uh, Fushin, and it says that the Columbus conspiracy is um, um, the Columbus conspiracy by um, Michael Bradley. And it says, Cells of Hopes, the secret mission of Christopher Columbus. These are books. Also, we have the, um, the teachings. It says the um, secret relationship, or the secret mission of Christopher Columbus by Simon Wessendahl, and even um, you get the book, The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews by the Nation of Islam, will reveal that no one knows who Christopher Colon really was. The name was an alias, and hence, Christopher Colon, or Colon, was a member of white. And so, we showed you that he's part of the priesthood, all right, um, of a secret society, the priesthood of a Jewish priesthood, the same Jewish conspiracy in which that is mentioned actually within the protocols of the Lord Elders of Zion, which is actually what becomes the Illuminati, or what becomes the Trilateral Commission to build the burgers, as well as also the Council of Foreign Relations. All right, now we know the same bloodline is who he was from. All right? Now, I know, you know, we, you know we're you not know, far from, you know, citing that you have Goldman Sachs, Rockefellers, Loeb Kahn, um, the Lehman Brothers in New York, uh, of New York, the um, Rothschilds of Paris and London, the Warburgs of, of um, Hamburg and um, Germany and um, of Paris, you know, and the Lazars, you know, um, Israel, Moses, um, Seth of Rome, all right? So these are the names, you know, and there's several others. You have um, the Astors, the Bundys, the Collins, the DuPonts, the Morgans, the Lees, the Freemans, the Van Dyne, the Veldebelts, the Melvingian, all right, um, the, um, the Russells, you know, the Canoe, McDonald's, Disney, all right, the names of the families who won the war and has control over the states and the international organizations like the United Nations, NATO, or the IMF, you know, World Bank, Federal Reserve Bank, you know, and many others, you know. So when we're talking about what's really going on, we're talking about the same bloodline in which that is attempting to um, control Right now, we know that the world's largest companies are now um, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup, Wells Fargo, who just took over uh, Wachovia, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley. They're all financial institutions, and they're all controlled by the names in which they be made mention of um, in some shape, form, or fashion. Either they sit on the board of directors, or they're part of the um, committees, or whatever the case is. Um, they, you know, they do, you come up with the same names because they always intermarry each other, all right? And this is how the money stays within the family, and this is how the rich stay rich, all right? So this is what's going on. It's a custom which that they learn from, uh, from, you know, from examining um, the Egyptians or the, um, or the Kemites or the Kamals or the Tamarians or, you know, whichever name and whichever you want to use. So Christopher Columbus was part of the same um, bloodline, and you actually can get, um, go to David's website, and you can actually get a connecting piece, a connection.
collective piece of what we're talking about from his website, he shows how all of these bloodlines intermarried and are connected to each um, each other. All right? And Christopher Columbus is also part of that same bloodline. All right? So this is what we're talking about. So in that regard, you know, of course we know about the racism in which that took place. As a matter of fact, you know, when we're talking about it, you know that he will be wanted, you know, for grand theft, genocide, racism, initiating the destruction of a culture, rape, torture, maiming of the indigenous people, you know, and the instigator of the of the biggest lie, of 500 years of terrorism, or well, tourism, <laughs> okay? So, but there's another book in which that's called The Problems of Racism on the Threshold of the 21st Century. It's very important. It's um, by, written by um, Rigoberta, um, Tung, Guatemalan indigenous leader and Nobel Peace Prize laureate. He said, The Phantom of Racism, Racism and Indigenous People. That's the title. He says, Racism has historically been a banner to justify the um, enterprise of expansion, conquest, colonial, um, colonization, um, and domination, and has walked hand in hand with intolerance, injustice, and violence. So colonization, you know, is part of that, you know, and in essence we're talking about, in a sense, what appears also to be linked to white supremacy, according to um, Dr. Nelly Fuller and Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, his student, you know. Um, you get the book um, Confrontation Theory of White Supremacy, read by Dr. Nelly Fuller, as well as um, the ISIS paper written by um, Dr. Francis Quest Wilson, you will find within those particular books is that the Albion, it comes down to one understanding, one simple understanding is that the Albion or the European fears genetic annihilation. And because of that fear is what causes him to work and act and work off of it and um, actively work off of what's called the reptilian portion of the brain because it is there in the reptilian portion of the brain in which that fear, you know, establishes itself because it is based on fight or flight, which is fear, all right? And it's um, connected to the two lower chakras specifically, the root chakra and the navel chakra. And this fear is what propels them to do what they do on planet Earth. Of course, you know, David Icke and others, you know, David Icke and Jordan Maxwell and others, you know, as you know, were adding that they are reptilians. You know, but what we're talking about specifically is the reptilian portion of the brain. And individuals who works off that primal brain are easily possessed by astral beings or entities from the first and second overtone of the astral plane. All right? And some can be to the point of being perfectly possessed, in which that you would think that they would just be normal, work very hard in society, do their job properly, so forth and so on. You know? But they actually are psychopaths and sociopaths. All right? If you get um, the book by... Is by Dr. Wright, all right, in which that he does racial, um, racial, racial, um, psychopathic tendencies. He states in his book, all right, Dr. Wright states in his book, Bobby E. Wright. Dr. Bobby E. Wright, he states in his book that there's only three things that you can do with a psychopath. One, lobotomize them. That means brain construction or reconstruction. In other words, to help them um, to reach beyond the reptilian portion of the brain or go beyond the reptilian portion of the brain into other higher aspects of their brain. 
um, of course, if your pineal gland is calcified, you know, then that somewhat relegates you to that particular area of the brain. All right? You also stage two, you can lock them up, put them in jail, prison for life. Or three, kill them. That is the conclusion in which that he has come to as a psychologist. All right? So, when we talk about white supremacy, we talk about ideology, not necessarily a skin color, because right now I see the masses of our people have taken on the white supremacy um, mentality also, even though it's in the opposite effect of the inferiority. All right? But we have the white supremacy tendencies. In other words, the same as this house slave um, did, master, oh, he's sick, that type of thing. You know, we're still there mentally because the Willie Lynch has not yet been broken. You know, this chip has not been yet deactivated, as Dr. As, um, Dr. Pastor Ray Hagen states. You know, now, according to Willie Lynch, it's supposed to happen, you know, the spell will last 300 to 1,000 years. Well, 1712 to and plus 300 would be 2012. So the spell is now being released, is being broken, all right? This information is coming out, and it is going towards um, a higher aspect of information, all right, um, based on the indigenous people of the world we're moving into the fifth dimension or the fifth world. Now, so this is the reason why, you know, for the Holocaust, it's based on the Holocaust, the African Holocaust, in which that it states that there was between Africa, the Middle Passage, and here in the Americas, the African people, the Moors, lost nearly 100 million lives. All right? Some go as high as 250 million. Dr. John Henry Clark states that at least 250 million was murdered, genocides, homicides. Okay? We know that um, it was um, said if you get Malcolm X's book on history, on Afro history, he states in there that based on the information that was available at that time, that from the Africa um, through the Middle Passage, you know, to here to the Americas, approximately 75 million lives were lost. All right? Now, we got to understand it just wasn't during the Middle Passage. They didn't have the technology to bring that many people over, not by the million. But we're talking about in Africa, when they went into Africa, when they went in and colonialized Africa, the French, the British, all right, the Belgians or the Portuguese, the Spaniards, when they went into Africa, all right, um, they killed millions and millions of people. And then we're talking about the millions or thousands and thousands upon thousands who died during the Middle Passage. And then here in the Americas, that's North, Central, and South, and they joined an island where there was more millions killed. And that decimation of the indigenous people on the planet reaches up to 250 million, according to... Um, most reports by African scholars. All right? So this is what was going on. So because of that, um, we think that Thanksgiving was part of that um, scenario, and it wasn't. The European didn't come up with Thanksgiving. We proved to you that the, Euro, um, that the European did not um, know anything about Thanksgiving. That actually came about through the first president on the, um, under the Articles of Confederation of the Second Constitution 
because you have four constitutions. You have the Articles of Association, you have the Articles of Confederation, you have the Declaration of Independence, and you have the Constitution for the United States of America and the Bill of Rights. So you have four constitutions, all right? So the Articles of Confederation was the second one, all right? And he put together, John Hanson put together um, that, um, the um, the celebration of Thanksgiving, the third Thursday in the month of November, symbolizing a celebration of um, the Moorish heritage and legacy and history. All right? So in that regard, it can be seen as Thanksgiving. However, if you're looking at it from the decimation of the Africans through the war based on Christopher Columbus or Christopher Colon, a Jew, and a spy on the Moors, and this is the reason why he left, you know, um, Spain under the request of um, King Fernandez and Queen Isabella with his three ships, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria, which were um, two of them with... Um, had morals on them in which that um, actually sold those particular boats, all right? Two more sold um, the Nia and the Pinta, all right? So those um, boats were sold by Moors. One in particular was Peter L. or Peter L. the Moor, or they called him Peter L. Negro, or Negro, Okay. So this is um, what's going on. Now, that's what we have to understand and understand is what took place. All right? Now, another interesting fact is that if you're going to use the Christopher Columbus information, then you will have to realize that Christopher Columbus never even touched down into the mainland of the of um, of America until his third expedition. All right? Which was um what, May thirtieth, fourteen ninety eight. All right, through October fifteen hundred. And that was then near um, Venezuela. So that's when they that's when they actually came to, other than that, they was off in Cuba, in which that they called it um, Isabella, you know, after Queen Isabella, of course, of Spain, you know, um, you know, they was then, um, you know, in Trinidad, Haiti, you know, or what's called the Dominica, you know, you know, this is the islands that they went to, you know, during the first in the second expeditional trip. But they didn't reach the mainland, you know, and that was South America to Venezuela until two um until um six years later in fourteen ninety eight. All right, so we have to understand that information also. All right? Cologne was um treading his way amidst an atmosphere of intense repression cloaking himself in piety, you know what I'm saying, a new Christian, holier than you, you know, um, appearing to approve expulsion of diversity from the Catholics um Spain. All right. However, Columbus wrote in his journals that I have had constant relations with the Jews and Moors. This is what he says. And the great astronomers, geographers, all right, of the day were Moors and he depended upon their calculation. These members of the elite were not as valuable at the great mass of the um, conversals who were in all walks of life and all classes. All right, so Christopher Columbus writes in his journals that he had constant relationship with the Hebrews and the Moors. All right, the Hebrews are the Jews that he referred to with the Sephardic Jews who were the original Hebrews, who are descended from the Colossians. 
all right? They're not the Ashkenazim convert Jews, you know, the Russians or the Mongolians slash Europeans, Britons, you know, that's, that is not who he's referring to. You have to get the book um, 13 Tribes by Arthur Kessler, as well as also um, Ancient and Moderate Britain by David Magrici, Volume 1 and Volume 2, in order to understand what we're talking about here. All right? So, when we get into... Mm-hmm. When we get into this information, we have to be quite clear of the concepts and the historical information that we are coming from and not just read it from one side. You have to look at it from all aspects, from all sides, in order to get a clarity and understanding on what actually took place and what was going on. So is there something wrong with celebrating Thanksgiving? No. Now, when you understand that John Hansen, the first president under the Uncle's Confederation, are the ones in which they actually put together the celebration, the Moors put together the celebration of um, Thanksgiving, which was based on um, the remnants of the Ottoman Empire, or what is known as the Songhai Empire, which is also known as the Malian Empire, which is also known as the Kushite Empire, which is also known as the Empire of Washtor de Dagdamania, all one and the same empire. The various names because of the reconstruction of history by the Europeans and Albion's in order to keep us from knowing who we are. And you know they're very good at that. Otherwise, you would have known the information was that we just dropped tonight, as well as other historical tidbits in which that can help you along this path of piecing this puzzle back together. Oftentimes, uh, we do not get correct information, and we go off of um, information in which that is one-sided. So what we're trying to do tonight is give you information from all sides where you can have to be able to do the proper um, analysis, where you can do your research and do your study, all right? So, once again, the turkey symbolized the Turks of the Ottoman Empire, who was Moors. If you don't believe me that the first Turks were Moors, then you get the book, or blacks, or Africans, as we would say, then you get the book by Jay Rogers, Sex and Race, Volume 1, and he will show you in there. Also, get the book that they never told you in history class by Indu Kimmich Kush. He showed you in there. So you don't have to believe anything in which that I say. Um, so you don't have to believe anything that I have to say, you know, um, as Aunt Bilaj Mahabi used to say, you can take it a little bit alone. All right? So this is the um, real um, deal of what's, what's going on. Um, you have um, a lot of things in which that goes forth now, you know, into um, a lot of connecting pieces to that puzzle, you know. Like, for example, i give you another tip of information. You actually, you actually have George Washington, who actually wrote to John Hansen and stated, um, to your excellence, um, I send forth the highest of salutations for achieving the highest seat in the land. Basically, that's a paraphrase, but that's, that is basically, you know, that's basically what he um, states. All right? So, the highest seat in the land was the presidency. Now, if George Washington was the first president, which you know he wasn't, I know because they told you that he was. I know they've told you that ever since nursery school or um, kindergarten. Yeah, I 
You know, so, you know, this this is the nonsense in which that reconstruction history has done to us. You know, if it wasn't for my um, 7th and 8th grade history teacher, Mr. Um, Harrison, I would have known about John Hanson probably until I got into the Moorish movement, but because he told us, you know, in the um, 7th and 8th grade that John Hanson was the first president of the United States under the Articles of Confederation, uh, when the Moors um, came out teaching on that information back in the um, mid-90s, you know, early to mid-90s, in the particular Brother um, Hakeem Bay, you know, um, Brother Hakeem H.Y. Bay, you know, it was definitely believable based on the fact of someone already verifying it, and he was an Albion or European himself. And he told us straight up, he said that George Washington was not the first president of the United States. So this is eight other presidents prior to George Washington uh, becoming president under what is called the Articles of Confederation, i.e. the Continental Congress, all right? Um, also part of them was under the, um, uh, what is known as the, um, the earlier ones. There was presidents also before them. There was eight presidents prior to John Hanson under the Articles of Association. So you have presidents from 1774 to 1781 under the Articles of Association, and then from 1781 to 1789, you had eight presidents under the um, Articles of Confederation, all right? And then to become the first president under the, um, the Constitution for the United States, or for the United States of America, that was George Washington, all right? Now the name Washington was take was a name that was taken on because actually it was Jorge Washington. However, he was killed off, and you get the book called Cosmic Trigger by Robert Wilson, um, Robert Anton Wilson. He tells you in there that um, the individual was not George Washington, but was replacing was killed and replaced by Adam Weiser, who was the father of the Bavarian Illuminati who came here to the United States to infiltrate through masonry as well as also through the political system in order to establish the Illuminati. And hence this connection which that we now see also. All right? Now the emperors taught us this back in 92, 93. She told us this information. That's empress... Um, Vidiasi, Tierra, Washington, Tunica, Gaston L. Bay. She um, told us this information, you know, back in the early 90s, that it was Adam Weiss, not George Washington, or Jorge Washington, who actually became president, or was the first president. So hence, the reason why they say that he was the first president of the United States, because he both filmed that Illuminati connection from out of um, Austria and Germany, that connection, because he was a Jesuit priest, a former Jesuit priest, which is an assassin for the Vatican. All right? So it was also a form of control by the Catholic Church once again even though it appears that he went against the Catholic Church, he was all part of the same thing. Because it is said that um, this Illuminati or this former Illuminati, um, Schubelin, I think his name is, he stated that the rituals for um, the initiation within the Catholic priesthood is the same. Matter of fact, he said in order to join the Illuminati or the Satanists, you had to become a Catholic priest. Okay? So these are just some of the connections in which that you have to go back and do some research on, and you'll see um, everything that we're talking about uh, makes sense. 
and how they um, overthrew the Moors here. Now, if you don't think that you're indigenous here, then you just look at Rex 84, or what is formerly known as the King Alfred Clan. And you can see that the Secretary of Defense is speaking about the minorities, as he referred to us as, you know, being able to pull out more superior numbers than them, you know, especially in the south, the eastern seaboard, the north, and the west coast. In other words, they're surrounded by the Negro population, as they refer to us as, basically, or the black population or the Moors. They're surrounded by it. We surround them. All right? As a matter of fact, there's an article in which the Hakeem spoke about years ago in which that, from out of Nexus magazine, in which that states that the Moors um, or the blacks ran the South. You know, um, prior to um, and during the times of Abraham Lincoln. All right? So this is um, also um, a known fact in which that, based on reconstructive, uh, reconstructive history, uh, we're getting different info now about it, or we've been told different info about it. All right? So go and check. Do your research. We're not crazy. We promise you that we are very sane. All right? I have three doctrines. Doctrine in theology, doctrine in divinity, and a doctrine in metaphysics, as well as also um, bachelor's in sociology, history, um, and so um, we definitely know the parts in which that is reconstructed, and the Moors have a very in-depth information because a lot of the Moors come from out of the Masons, and within the books of the Masons, once again, a secret society, you will have that information in which that is in the books or secrets in which that was told to, the, told to them via the Albion. For example, um, i give you a good example. Um, it is said that Master Muhammad looked like a white man. You don't know if he was or not because based on what he said, he's supposed to come from Arabia was born in Arabia, 1877, you know, so forth and so on. However, um, it is said that he was a Shriner and that he taught um, Honorable Elijah Muhammad, you know, the Shriner secret of the white Shriner secret. And matter of fact, they did, um, they, the Shriners at that time, the white Shriners, did not want to bring, um, they had a problem with bringing the Negroes, as they referred to us as, into the shrine. But yet the shrine was originally ours because when you look up Islam, as I was saying earlier about happy, the word Shrem and Isram or Islam, the R's and the L's are interchangeable. Now, Sarem is spelled S-A-R-E-M. Well, if the R's and the L's are interchangeable in the Metronetal language, then it becomes also S-A-L-E-L, which becomes Salem, or Salem, in which that becomes the word Salam, which also becomes Islam. All right? Now, they said that happy bought, uh, Muhat, Mat, bought Sarem, to the people. The word Sarem means the shrine or the sanctuary of Ra. All right? The shrine or the sanctuary of Ra. And in a sense, it's also translated to the shrine of the tear of the eye of Ra. or the shrines of the children of Ra. We symbolize the tears of Ra. Here's the reason why we are called burnt face Ethiopians or Egyptos, which means burnt face, because it's talking about our complexion, and what will burn us would be also the sun. So 
the sun symbolized Ra in ancient times, and we became known as the sun people. So if we were a drop or the rays of the sun in flesh, you have seven rays of Ra within you, known as your melanin centers or your endocrine glands, i.e. your chakra system or the seven churches. This is what this is all massively um, coming down to. Excuse me. So as um, you get clarity on things, um, this information begins to start making more sense to you. And you're able to draw forth from as above, so below, as within, so without. Until you actually have that supreme axiom down pat. Um, truthfully, um, I don't see um, the reason, you know, for a lot of the um, misteachings taking place. Because a student will have to go into the supreme axiom in order to explain, because that's part of, you know, mentalism. That's one of the laws of the seven principles or the seven universal principles of Tahuti. Mentalism, you have correspondence, which as above, so below, as potential, but also correlates to correspondence, polarity, rhythm, vibration, gender, cause and effect, you know, and um, which is called karma and polarity. So those are the seven principles of Tahuri. And, of course, Tahuri, um name it actually is Ta, which becomes Ja, or Yah, as in Jehovah or Yahweh, or Yahuwah. So that actually is a form of Tahuri. And this is the difference between uh, when you read in the Old Testament about um, the Yahweh and the El, and how El and Yahweh was two different deities. Actually, they weren't. El is Ra, or Ray, and which symbolizes the right eye, which is a form of Osa, and his counterpart, in a sense, would be that of Tahuti. So one represents the sun, one represents the moon. Tahuti is the moon god deity, which symbolizes the left eye. So when you bring them together, they symbolize the two eyes in which they become single, in which that is mentioned within Matthew the sixth chapter, the twenty second verse, that if the eye be single, the whole body would be filled with light. So these two eyes, El and Yahweh, or or Ra or Re and Tahuti or Jufuti, who the Jews also get there. Transliteration of the name Judah, Jadis, uh, Jew, which is short for Judah, um, or, uh, you know, or, you know, so forth and so on. That's where it comes from. And they are saying that they're the followers of the seven principles, universal principles of Tahuti. That's what the Jews are actually saying. This is why right now they control the world because their um, Kabbalic teachings is based on the seven principles of Tahuti. Once again, mentalism as being that's being able to control the mind, mental magic, mind control, psychic powers, abilities, so forth and so on. You know, and the other six, as we said earlier. So this is what they are saying in niche, um, the, um, essentially is that they are the masters of those seven principles. All right? Now, let's get back into some of this historical information I will push for and having technical difficulties, I will be able to um, answer some questions. As a matter of fact, I can't even see the chat room or anything else right now. Um, hopefully you are able to hear us, you know, um, come through. What we have right now is the phone. Um, so um, hopefully, you know, you all enjoy the information. 
start getting the information, and we'll do your research and study on it. All right, let's go into um, some more information because um, you will find that Anu is, is a form of On, and On in ancient Kemet is actually a form of Ra once again. All right, so when you say On or Anu, um, that's Ra also. As a matter of fact, we know that the Jews refer to God as Ra. And that is L. L is Ra. And you get El Ra or El Roy, which becomes Leroy in the English transliteration. Right, which means the might of God. Okay? So, um this 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 we have to do some clarity. We have to have some clarity on this. All right, so hopefully um, everybody got that information that we dropped um, so far. And um, we can get back into um, this Jewish connection and what they really believe in. You can get also uh, past Frontline Magazine issues. Um, big, big ups to my brother, Marcus Klein, I'm out of Chicago. Um, I wrote for the Frontline magazine for several years um, in the early 2000s. And he had some of the best articles, you know, outside of also um, with the Javon Butler from um, Ghetto Times magazine, which I think, you know, his um, site is still up. You know, y'all need to check him out, for the Javon Butler. Um, 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 he goes by another name now, but that's that's what the name was um, back in them days. And um, you know, check them out. You know, check them out. They got the um, some of the best information as far as these connections. All right. Now. And how do you know that there's a lot of secrets that are being held from us, especially the thing uh, in the white swinehood? It's because, like we made mention of before, my wife and I went to London to do a lecture for those that might have seen um, the lecture um, in London that we did on Halloween. And and um, we did lecture for three days. So we did Halloween and um, Qigong and Tai Chi and metaphysics, the history class, and so forth and so on, all right? But you can go and see that footage on YouTube, all right? In particular, you can go to um, our website um, or YouTube. Um, it's Aline N. Kadera, K-A-D-I-R-A-H, Aline, A-L-I-M, the letter N, Kadera, K A D I. R A H YouTube and um you can see um some of the um YouTube clips on our YouTube page. Um as well as also you can go to our website www dot cultural that C U L T U R A L dash or hyphen freedom R F R E E D O M dot com. So www dot cultural dash freedom dot com. You can go there to our website in order to look at some clips there. As well as also our other website which is www dot free F R E E Web W E B S dot com forward slash Raka R A K A right slash. All right, that's www dot free webs dot com right slash, Raka, R-A-K-A, right slash, all right? And those interested in knowing more information that we talked about tonight, you can get my book called The First World Order, and you can get it from off the site of www.cultural-freedom, 
dot com. All right, and we got to go into um, all of the so-called laws of black presidents prior to Obama, and I prove it. You know, because that's a big issue too. You know, you know, we say that Obama is the first black president. You know, and that's not true. Okay. All right. We had eight presidents up under the Articles of Association, eight presidents under Articles of Confederation, and we had um, others such as Andrew Jackson, um, Abraham Lincoln, Dwight Eisenhower, Calvin Coolidge. All right. And um, even Alexander Hamilton, you know, um, you get the five Negro presidents by J. Rogers, and you get the six black presidents by Sister Orsett. Two books in which that breaks down the information that we're talking about. All right? So we had, in essence, about 21 um, presidents that was Melanated. Okay? So Obama is not the first. He's the first in modern day time. However, as I was saying, when my wife and I went to the United Grand Lodge of England, which is one of the largest Masonic halls in the world, possibly the largest, the curator of the museum portion followed us around in order to find out our views on Obama being the first black president. He said, well, how do you feel about the possibilities of the first black president? Me and two brothers who, we, who invited us there to London, we looked at each other and started laughing, and we looked at, we get ready to look at my wife, and before we could even turn our heads, good. She already said, I thought there was at least now before him. And the guy jumped back like Mike Tyson hit him and said, who told you that? You're not supposed to know that. Did they tell you that? So the question that we were going to ask him as we were laughing was, who is the thing that he's referring to? Well, obviously, we're in the Masonic, the Grand Lodge of, you know, the United Grand Lodge of England, possibly the largest Masonic hall in the world outside of our ancient structures, such as the Hall of um, the, um, the King, the Hall of the... Um, of judgment or the halls of the kings or what's called the king's valley, you know, but you know, but here, you know, all, you know, the temples of Karnak and Waset, you know, and they're called Memphis, Memphis and Thebes, all right, but regardless, our ancient mystery school but here it is, moderately, he was stating that how did we know that? Who told us that? And did they, his European brothers, his Masonic shrine of brothers, reveal those secrets to us here? Because we're not supposed to know that. But this is a worldwide conspiracy in order to oppress, suppress, depress, and compress the Moors mentality to not just dumb down America, but to specifically dumb down those with the genes who produce the mounds, who produce the pyramids, structures on the planet Earth, which they have now given credit to aliens to be to have done this. But yet, forbidden archaeology by Michael Creedmoor, he states 2.8 billion years ago, billion, not million, now we're talking about Dag Mesh. We're talking about Lucy. And what's that for those who follow um, Ashwa Kwesi, the fossil, you know, um, we're not talking about two um, million years ago, possibly, that she existed. We're talking about 2.8 billion years ago, intelligent beings was already on the planet Earth, and they were smelting metals. And it was artistic work in which that was done. And you can get that from the book, Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Cremore, 
and Richard Thompson, Richard L. Thompson, and he and they state that um, it was found in Western Transville, South Africa. These particular spears, in which that was made out of metal, in which that is unknown now on planet Earth, or at least they have not rediscovered this metal as of yet. But of course, in order to smelt metal, it had to be into thousands of degrees. And they had the technology 2.8 billion years ago. So they said, obviously, these were intelligent beings. So this is who we're talking about, these intelligent beings, all right? These extraterrestrials are the extra terra astral beings. Extra astro, which is star energy, terra, Earth. So extra star energy on Earth. 300,000 tons of star dust energy flows to the planet Earth daily. Your physical body, according to scientists, is composed of star dust energy. During solar flare activities, it is the extra amount of star dust energy in the atmosphere, in which that causes the aurora borealis of the north and southern poles um, to actually go beyond and extend even into um, sections in which that normally people can't see. But now they can see because of these extra energies coming in, these solar flares, super flares, mega flares, in which that comes in every 11 to 22 years. And every 100 years, we have a extra dose of these solar flare activities or corona mass ejections, or CMEs, as they refer to it. All right? Get um, Dr. Um, he's a physicist, Dr. Kakaku. He's been on the um, um, Art Bell show, George Norrie, Coast to Coast, AM. Um, he's been on there for years now. And he even speaks about the possibilities of these solar flag activities. But the point is, is that these solar flares or these or this stardust energy is what our physical body is composed of. So we are extra terra astral energies or extraterrestrials in that sense also. All right? And of course you get Robert Temple's book, The Serious Mystery, Mary and Hope book, Serious Connection. The Pale Fox is another book in which they all speak about the Syrian beings um, from the Dogon perspective and how the Dogon states that we came from the star constellation Sirius, in which that, that is true because our solar system, in particular our sun, was formed from the implosion of the star dust in which that was released from the implosion of, star, of Sirius B. Was that formed our solar system into existence? In particular, formed our sun, and our sun acting as a young, raging sun or star, cast off solar plasmic energy, and we see it got trapped within um, ten particular orbits around it, and which that becomes the planet um, that we now know. Of course, one planet was destroyed, um, you know, allegedly, in which that was called the planet of Marduk, in which that sat between the atom, which is not an asteroid belt, in which that once sat between. Jupiter and Mars. Now you can get that information from um, Dr. Debbie Blair. He teaches on that. Also, Dr. Malachi York. He teaches on that. All right. And you can get that from the man um, from the planet Rick. It was that he talked about it within there. Also, Shambhala and Agatha. And several other books. Right, I'm giving you a plethora of books to go and research and study because you're not going to get it from one book. All right, not everything you need, but I try to definitely come close to my book to give you all of this information that I'm breaking down tonight. And all of those books that I've mentioned are excerpts in my book, as well as many, many, many hundreds of thousands or more. In which that shows and proves beyond a shadow of a doubt our legacy. 
our history, our heritage. All right? So, when you go back and look at, like we were saying earlier, we were talking about the FEMA, or what's called um, the uh, executive orders of FEMA, in particular, um, King Alfred plan, known as Rex 84, not only did they say that the minorities were able to march out more people than them in those particular areas, but also that we were bound to this continent by heritage. You look up the word heritage in the Webster Universal Dictionary, it states specifically that heritage is birthright. That is a synonym of heritage is also birthright. It also states chosen people, God's chosen people in the definition. Right? I think that might be the Western Merriam Dictionary also. All right? So you have to look these things up. So when they say that we are bound by this continent by heritage, they're saying that we cannot seek asylum outside anywhere because we are bound here. We are connected to this land mass. Because we have been here for millions and even billions of years, right here in the Western Hemisphere. And if you don't believe me, once again, get the book Forbidden Archaeology by Michael Creedmoor, The Hidden History of the Human Race. That's what it says. That's, that's the subtitle, Forbidden Archaeology, The Hidden History of the Human Race by Michael Creedmoor. And he says in there specifically that 600 million years ago at Meadon Hill Rock in Dorchester, Massachusetts, they blew out a metallic vessel, which was about four inches high, in which that had exquisite artwork around it. But it says, this shows because your being was again smoking metals and artistic work dating back 600 million years ago in pudding stone, in, in um, a type of stone called pudding stone. 600 million years ago, right here in North America, in what they now refer to as the United States, or the continental America, in Dorchester, Massachusetts, 600 million years ago. Well, if you look at Pangea, which is all the land masses together, the continental drift in the current to 200 million years ago. So for 400 million years prior to the continental drift, we was already here, in the Western Hemisphere. And if you ever see the continents when they are put together like a piece um, of a puzzle, South Africa, I mean, South America gets up into um, the Ivory and Gold Coast over down to South Africa, um, North um, America fits um, at the top portion, that's the northwestern portion of Africa fits into it. Um, Madagascar fits directly into um, the eastern portion of the seaboard portion of Africa. And everything is converged upon Africa. Africa sits at the hub or at the center. And as we know that, because the pyramid sits at the center of the planet Earth today on the Giza Plateau. Right? So Africa was definitely the center of our diaspora. It was from out of the interior of Africa, from out of Uganda, Tanzania, um, Kenya, or Ethiopia area, in which that we emerged from out of the what's called the Allegory Gorge, or Gorge, excuse me, Allegory Gorge, but it's now known as Lake Victoria, as they call it. All right, from out of the interior, what they call the moon. All right, this is also said to be the place in which that the moon split off from the planet Earth, also. But that's another discussion. That's that's going to Nation Islam, Elijah Muhammad's doctrine, which I recommend that you read too. Message of the Black Man by Arthur Elijah Muhammad. 
all right? Um, also goes into the Nation of God's Alert. Get your hands on a copy of the 120. I suggest that you go to Mecca. Get your hands on a copy of the 120. Go and see the enlightenment, see the law. Or uh, whomever might be in the store portion of uh, Mecca. That's in Harlem, New York. Right, I think it's down there, 124th Street. Right? So, go and do your research, do your study. Um, it is necessary, especially in these times that we're in, to get your knowledge up. All right? With the beginning of your knowledge expansion, from your base, expansion of your knowledge. You also want to incorporate exercise into the, into the scenario. Also, the science of breath. Also, the science of sex, which is one of the quickest ways to achieve spiritual enlightenment is through sex itself, especially when the cobra breath is incorporated into the um, sexual experience. There's a lot of information for which that is not being told to us. One of the masters of uh, that was Pastel Beverly Randolph. All right, another one was Osho, who was um, one of the teachers of my teacher, Sangata Saraswati. Right, who wrote the book Jewel and the Lotus, who also was the teacher of Manta Chia, who was the teacher of Wayne Chandler. So this connection into the Tantra or the Tantra Kriya Yoga information. All right, the Kriya Yoga is really something that was produced or established or promoted by Yogananda, who also was one of the teachers of my teachers sang out of Sarah's five at a young age. So there's a lot of information. And it's the research and study and you need to all board together. Because it goes back to uh, Francis Quest Wilson and the white supremacy confrontation theory in which that Lily Fuller, her teacher, spoke about the nine battle fronts. And they made mention of the front. It says sex, labor, entertainment, education, religion, law. Okay? Right, you got to understand. These are just some of the... Um, of these particular principles in which that they have the Illuminati or the said, and I said the said Illuminati, because they actually aren't illuminated. They are dimmed of light. And they can't even stand the light. They can't even stand Ra, but yet, you know, attempt to call upon Ra. And yet actually can't process the light of Ra, the rays of Ra. They vampire this action. All right, and they have calcified pioneer glands, a lot of them. All right, 60 to 80 percent, according to um, Dr. Richard King. But these say ones who's in elite positions, they have utilized the secret teaching of the Moors. All right, you can get the book Stone and Legacy by George G. James. We state between pages 39 to 42 that the Moors are the custodians or guardians of the ancient mysteries of Egypt. All right? Now, why would that have to be revealed in a book in which that was written, you know, in the 20th century? 
when supposedly the Moors, you know, was out of power by 1492. <clears throat> if you get the information, you'll find out that the Moors was banished from Granada, Spain, the last stronghold, um, January of 1492. Um, and by March, I believe they had to leave. And that was also along with the um, Sephardic Jews, known as the Hebrews. And then by October of 1492, Christopher Columbus um, finally gave, you know, after put, um, petitioning Queen Isabella and King Fernandez to get his three ships. But I'm sure that he was a double spy because not only was he doing work for them, he was doing also work for Portuguese government also, in which that is said that actually that's where he comes from, from Portuguese. Portugal. He was a Portugal Jew. All right, so these are just some of the things, once again. All right? Um, get ready to get um, a ball for here. Um, hopefully y'all got something for tonight's discussion, information. Hopefully y'all do your research and study. I can't stress that enough. You know, my brother just called me last week and said, you know, that he, you know, been watching my videos, you know, and that he went back and checked out, you know, all the books that I made mention of and, and everything that I was saying, and he found that basically everything I was saying was true based on the books that I referenced. And that's what this takes. It takes you referencing books in which that hope brings clarity and find those missing pieces. Right, a good book for what I just made mention of about the Moors um, leaving Spain or uh, it's called um, Spain, um, The Moors of Spain by Stanley Poole and The Moors After Spain by Stanley Poole. Those two um, books will help you get clarity. Also, The African Origin of Civilization by Shikata Diop, the Diop, is a good book. And, of course, Destruction of Black Civilization by Chancellor Williams, excellent book. And the African Holocaust, um, Christopher Columbus, by um, Dr. John Henry Clark. Right, there was some more books. All right, so hopefully I'll do your research. All right, we out, Joe. Hey. First World Order Radio, finally, finally, we are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that order consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Her 
murky state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics Of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it Proceeding others in time, order, importance The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments Earthly state of human concerns in existence An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance System regulates to bring about specifics In the group based on value and natural characteristics Current radiates electromagnetistics Of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it you need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, get your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories and shit that works.